Yes, you have read that right. I no longer have power to the barn. And it's not really anybody's fault, except for it's now only impacting me. So I hired some people to come out here and grind some stumps and get rid of a few things out here. And during the process, they actually cut the power. And you might be thinking, hell, Hamilton, they aren't going to be grinding that low. And I would agree with you, but the power was run almost on the very top of the ground. I digress. Things weren't done properly, and in order to have proper power out at the barn, it's going to take weeks, if not months. And I have challenged myself to be able to post a YouTube video every single Friday with a CNC woodworking project, and that is not changing this week. So what we're going to be doing is figuring out exactly how <laughs> to get power in here, because I've done like the cheapest and the dirtiest and the worst type of fix that I would not tell anybody to do just to kind of have power in there. And I don't know if it's actually going to run things, but I do know that we're going to be doing a CNC project this week. <laughs> if you're brand new here, welcome. It's not always like this. I'm glad that you're here. Stay tuned. We're doing some stuff. I hope. So after talking with the power company, they sent a guy out. He was awesome. He walked me through the whole process. And this is what I'm about to do. I have to install a meter base on the outside, and then they have to bring in power. In order for them to bring in power, it's quite the ordeal because I'm more than 200 feet away from the pole, so I've got to put another pole on my property, and then I don't want lines everywhere, so we're burying it to an underground transformer. From that transformer over to the shop, I'm gonna get 200 amps, which is very cool because there's some dream machines that I'd like to have in the shop, but it, power's always been an issue. Unfortunately, I can't have three phase out here. Uh, when I asked, he like looked around the neighborhood and was like, why? <laughs> he was like, that doesn't even exist out here, and I was like, eh, I just thought I'd ask. So. I have to do all that, but then I also have to get it permitted, and then I have to get it inspected. I'm praying that they just don't walk inside the barn to do the inspection. Um, we'll see what happens. All that to say, it's going to be like a month before I have legitimate power back in the shop again, which is really disconcerting. So, I probably am still going to have to buy a generator at some point, because life moves on. Uh, but, I'm doing it right, I'm getting the correct power here. And hopefully that's going to be something that I'm very happy with long term. Something that I don't know how it's going to run is this little machine right here. So we've gone ahead, we've taken the spindle out because it is 220 volt, which for some reason I cannot run right now. And we put in the Makita router. If you've got an 80 millimeter spindle mount, you can go ahead and get these little like uh, collars or reducers so that you can reduce your 80 millimeter to a 65 millimeter so that it can accept trim routers like this Makita right here. Hopefully, I've got enough power to be able to do this. And these are super, super simple. I'm specifically doing this file because of what's happening power-wise, but it was going to be coming up regardless. And I'm really excited that we get to be able to show it off today. We're going to be doing five different iterations of a very classic woodworking project. Very simple, easy to use for scrap material. It's going to be a thumb page holder opener. It's something that you put over your thumb and as you're reading, it just keeps the pages fully open as you're, you know, reading your book. So it's something that's very, very simple to make, but more importantly, it's an add-on item or just something to get people to go into your booth and markets because you can sell these things for like five bucks because you can batch out a ton of them at once. We're gonna be cutting out all five different variations all at the exact same time with this, and then we're gonna be putting a roundover on them. Since it is half inch material that we're using to cut these out, I'm gonna be using my mini roundover bit that is gonna really soften over all the edges. So without further ado, let's go ahead and load up the file. We're going to zero out the machine, and then we're going to start, and fingers crossed, it actually has enough power to get through this carving, because I really don't wanna go buy a generator today. But hey, hopefully this is entertaining. <laughs> Enjoy my misery. It is time for this week's mystery file, and what that means is Mitz has sent me over some mystery G-code. I've loaded it on the controller, and I'm about to press go. We're only going to be using two bits for this. The Groovy Ginny, our 60 degree, we're going to be, I guess, carving something out, and then the Downtown Ginny, and I assume we're going to be cutting something out. So we're going to be using our half-inch MDF and just kind of letting it rip. We'll see what happens. I have no idea what these are. I mean, I get it, they're, they're bunnies. It was really confusing with the first V-bit. Thought that we we're making clouds and then it was very apparent that we were cutting up bunnies. This weekend is Easter weekend. Happy Easter to everybody out there watching. 
but I have no idea what the hole is for and what these are supposed to do. So instead of calling Mitz right now and asking him what these are, let me know down in the comments what you actually think these are. Maybe they're like finger spinners. Maybe they're like for like place settings. Regardless. Thanks, Mitz. So in all this hustle, I forgot to mention the bit that we're using. We're using the Downtown Jenny, which is one of the only three bits that you need to CNC with me. All of the Toolpath databases, as well as our feeds and speeds, are available on cncwithme.com. After I cut all those out, everything worked out just as planned with all the double-sided tape, so I didn't do any type of tabs, so we're not having to route those out later. Speaking of routing, these things are really small and dainty, and the router that I was using, if I had a much larger faceplate on it, uh, I don't think that I would have had the issues that I had, but unfortunately I did dip into the material a little bit and it is accentuated by all of this walnut veneered plywood because the second that that walnut veneer on the very top looks even slightly inconsistent, it really shows through on the final product. But I'm pretty darn happy with how these came out. They're very small, very usable, and it's something that you can easily throw in as an upsell onto your market days or just something to bring people in saying that you have objects that are three, five dollars, something really, really small. You definitely can brand these, but the branding would have to be pretty darn tiny because these are quite dainty. Now there's five different designs and I kind of don't have a favorite of each of these. Um, let me know down in the comments below. I'll have like numbers next to each one about your favorite version of this because I think each of them have their own quirks and uses to them. But overall, I think this is a really, really cool especially easy project. Next up, I'm gonna be putting some spray varnish on these, and what that's gonna do is it's not only going to protect it, but it's also going to dry very quickly. You definitely don't wanna use any type of an oil finish with this, especially if it's meant to be touching a book, because even if the oil definitely looks dry or feels dry to the touch, there's definitely a possibility that right when it touches that book, it is going to soak into those pages, so you definitely don't wanna use any type of an oil finish at all. There's actually a sixth secret version of these over on cncwithme.com, so if you remember, make sure to go over and download those files because these in particular are the first ones that we're going to be having two of them completed with Carbco and Vectrix, so you have two different options if you're just ready to save your G-code, but we're also going to have an additional four options, three of which are right here, and you can follow along in the Toolpath tutorial over on CNC with me, and these are very, very simple. We, like I said earlier, we just use our downtown Jenny to kind of clear out the middle for your thumb to be able to sit in, and then to do our profile passes. Now, they look fine, and... They work fine too. Now I'm not exactly sure which of these designs is my favorite. I know that each of them has their allure. I, I think this one's pretty sharp. Uh, so I personally would stay away from that one. This one right now is, is my favorite just because it has the swoop, but I haven't specifically tried all of them yet. I like that one a lot too. That's pretty cool. And yeah, the arrowhead ones, I just feel like they're a little bit pointy. Uh, so maybe, I don't know, scratch a page or something like that. I think I'm just gonna stick with this one. It's, it's kind of the classic version, but this one is really nice as well. So, like I said earlier, make sure that you're not using any type of an oil finish with this, especially if you're using plywood because that oil can just kind of sit in between these layers and eventually as you're putting it onto a book, it really could start just seeping into the pages and no one really likes that. Other than that, these things cut out super duper fast. I'm pretty sure that I cut all five of these out in less than three minutes. They're just as simple as can be. Even if you have a much smaller machine, this is going to be a very, very fast project. Now, I have these specifically set up for half inch material, and I do think that that's something that you should really consider is sticking with something a little bit more thin. Obviously, if we went to quarter inch material, I think that would be a little bit too thin and not very comfortable, but three quarter inch, I feel like would be just a little bit too chunky. Now also something that I definitely want to mention is the router. Earlier when I mentioned that I was dipping into the project a little bit too much, you can see that and it shows up and it automatically makes the project look not that great. Now, a lot of times I get the questions on my channel about why don't you just do a round over on the CNC machine? And you certainly can, but unfortunately that is only one side. So if you want to go through the entire process of setting up your tab so that it's in the very center of your material rather than at the bottom, you can go ahead and flip over your project and run it again, and you can definitely put a round over on both sides and then go back and then use a flush trim bit to finish everything up. But that takes a project that's less than a minute on the CNC machine, even with the round over afterwards, into a multiple step and kind of a headache, whereas I just don't think that's worth it at the end of the day. 
But I think the easy way to be able to remedy the situation that I was in is to put a much larger base plate on the bottom of your router. That way that it has constant contact. And if you have other pieces that are the same height, you can rest on those as well as you're going around. Now, a lot of times on the channel, I do use double-sided tape. I put that down and then I slap the parts down to it. And I find that for small parts, that is by far the most tried and true way that I've been able to actually hold a part down and reliably be able to route it. Unfortunately, sometimes it does end up with us being able to dip into our parts a little bit. And that's just not great. I think a lot of people are going to use the word character <laughs> for that. But when you're using a nicer plywood that's veneered like this walnut, it's just going to show up that much more. If you're using like a Baltic birch, you're not going to be able to see that near as much because the walnut is really what's making that thing pop right there. But for me in the shop, I had a piece of one foot by one foot square of half inch walnut plywood, and I thought that it would show off this project perfectly. I'm just amazed that we were able to actually pull this through without me going and having to buy a generator. Maybe I might still need to do that next week, but I've got a lot of work ahead of me. I hope that y'all really enjoyed this video. I know that I had a blast. Even with everything going on, it's nice to be able to get a project done completed in the shop. I really appreciate y'all stopping by, and I will see you and see y'all later. Well, next Friday. Bye.